Well, that was an uh, that was an interesting draft. We'll go with interesting. The first round of the 2016 NHL entry draft is over. Now, if you were one of the few to get bombarded by me on Twitter with a relentless amount of posts regarding a particular player, you'll know I was very excited for not only the draft, but with what the Boston Bruins could do in this draft. But before getting into that, let's touch up on the rest of this draft. Of course, with the first overall pick, Austin Matthews goes to Toronto. No crazy deal with Arizona to make sure that they get the hometown boy. Just forward and to the point directly after this pick. We get Montreal mentioned in a trade announcement and the entire hockey world goes silent until it's announced that they've A, traded Lars Eller to Washington because as GM Mark Bergevin claims they already have Philip Deneau. Good luck with that, by the way. And B, they acquire Andrew Shaw from Chicago. Now, first off, obviously, neither of these moves happen to be the Subban trade everyone was hoping for. I still hope it happens so I can just die happy, and it would certainly not be above this regime to do so, but Andrew Shaw in a Habs uniform. If you've poked around my channel a bit, you'll know a name I love to bring up is former NHLer Chris Nyland. As tough as they come, won't back down from anybody, and has the ability to put points on the board as well, and Andrew Shaw very well could be that guy for the Habs in 2016 moving forward. It's going to suck playing against the Habs, not only for Shaw, but of course Gallagher as well. The third pick, and it was a doozy as we get our first slightly off the board pick with the Jackets taking Pierre-Luc Dubois. Now he was easily a top 10 pick, maybe even a top 5, but yeah, the Oilers basically won the lottery here as they end up with Jesse Pugliarvi. So to Columbus with another high risk pick, I wish you the best of luck. And to Edmonton, you unbelievably lucky bastards. Just go get yourself a set of defensemen already. Hell, Eberle for McQuaid. You know you want to, Chirelli. Vancouver takes you a levy, which allows Matthew the Chuck to go to Calgary. Despite the positional differences, that will be a debate for a very long time. Clinton Keller to Arizona, Alex Nylander to Buffalo, so that heats up the Buffalo-Toronto rivalry just a little bit more. Both fan bases, by the way, were in fine form in the arena, and Tim Murray, four words to announce the pick. Well done. Montreal and Colorado get solid picks. Ottawa trades up for Logan Brown, so along with last year's pick, Colin White, they have a very, very dangerous set of center prospects. The Devils take Michael McLeod, Carolina takes Jake Bean with the 13th pick. We'll ignore the 14th for the moment, and the 16th for that matter. Winnipeg trades up, and they go off the board to take 6'7 monster Logan Stanley. And look, he projects to be a third-pairing guy. Who knows what he'll actually become, but imagine Bufflin, Myers, and Stanley on the Winnipeg blue line. Move the team to Oregon, call them the Bigfoots, and let's make some money. The Islanders, Hurricanes, and Flyers all make great picks. Then Florida goes off the board with another fin. Basically, the last few picks panned out as expected, which means who the hell knows? Anyone ranked between 25th and 40th could have easily been in the last five picks, which brings me, of course, to the Bruins. Again, if you saw me on Twitter, the seconds felt like hours. With every pick, more and more forwards being taken, and the Bruins more and more likely to get a great defenseman. Sure, Yuel Levy and Sergachev were gone, but the second the Carolina Hurricanes took Jake Bean with the 13th pick, the stage was set. The Bruins had their pick of the litter. The Boston University prospect Charlie McAvoy, who is line mates with newly signed Bruins defender Matt Grizzlick, Dante Fabro, or Jacob Chitron, the former number two ranked prospect when the new season began, Twitter was divided. It seemed destined for them to take the defender who was in their own backyard. But after a really tough showing over the past few months, Chitron fell and he was there for the taking. Now it's no secret, especially if you saw those tweets, I wanted Chitron. I really did not because of the whole Vancouver GM mode series thing, which would have been funny as hell, by the way. It certainly didn't hurt. But I truly believe he'll pan out to be a great player. Will he only be a second pairing guy? Possibly. But everybody knows he has the talent. He was ranked at number two for as long as he was for a reason. It's just a matter of him putting it together. People on Twitter, especially Bruins-related accounts, love to hate on those who wanted Chitron. Quote, oh, you, 
you only wanted him because you watched the YouTube video for two minutes and you're buying into the hype. You're right, we should take him. Bottom line, I think both will be fine players. Talking about Chitron and talking, of course, about who they eventually took, Charlie McAvoy. But the Bruins made the safe pick, which in the end might not be the worst thing. At the very least, they did gain another defender and didn't go off the board. And at the moment, things are looking pretty good defensively as far as prospects go. You have Jakob Zaboral, Brandon Carlo, Jeremy Lozon, Rob O'Gara, Matt Grizzlick, Linus Arneson, Chris Casto, all guys who could reasonably be viewed as future players, even if it's third pairing. Hell, even guys like Joe Morrow and Colin Miller, who have had NHL playing time, can still be viewed as prospects. So I am happy with McAvoy, of course. He should be a fine player, and yes, the whole I hate the Bruins tweet from when he was 15 or whatever, I mean, that's it's hilarious. The odds that you get drafted by the team that you root for is pretty damn slim, so I obviously don't hold it against them. It's funny that anybody would. But let us not forget that this is Don Sweeney, and we are all on the wild ride. This is Don Sweeney, this is Cam Neely, and these are the Bruins, the 29th overall pick, Trent Frederick. Now, he does seem like a promising player. Good with the puck. Good shot. Not afraid to grind it out in the corners or in front. But for someone whose ceiling is most likely a third liner, maybe a second liner, and who was expected to go in the late second, early third round, they just had to. They had to go off the board. Odds are he still would have been there for the Bruins' first, second round pick, 49th overall. And even then, if you think he might go just before that, you could always trade up, but no, we take him here. And again, Frederick might turn out to be a great player, and certainly drafting people based on pre-draft rankings doesn't always turn out. It doesn't take a genius to go back and look at prior drafts and see the laundry list of people taken in the first round who never did anything in the NHL, only to look at the fifth round or later and see future Hall of Famers. So yes, it is unfair to judge in a lot of cases. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you should go this far off the board. I imagine they have a lot of faith in him. But I'll say this. Stanley Cup of Chowder is a fantastic Twitter account. And I suggest my fellow Bruins fans to follow them on Twitter if you have not already. They said Frederick was unranked by four of six scouting services. With the rankings putting him at 65th. So again, odds are... He is there at number 49. He was ranked 58th by TSN and Bob McKenzie, 47th by Central Scouting among North American skaters. Still available, even now still available because the Ducks took Sam Steele with the 30th overall pick. Boris Kachuk, or Kachuk, a left wing, ranked 29th by TSN and 25th by Central Scouting. Kale Clegg, a defenseman, ranked 30th and 27th. Rasmus Asplund, a forward ranked 31st and 4th by Central Scouting among European skaters. Pascal Laberge, 32nd and 28th. Alex Debrinkit, 33rd and 21st. And even Tyler Benson, 39th and 24th. I think you guys get my point. It was a frustrating end to the night. Not to say I'm outraged. The bottom line is the Bruins still have the last few rounds on top of having the offseason ahead of them. A lot remains unanswered. We do know that St. Louis was apparently asking for both first-round picks and Posternock for Shattenkirk. So, uh, yeah, no thank you to that. Good on Sweeney for declining that, that's for sure. And at this point, re-sign Krug, sign Brian Campbell through free agency, and I'm happy. Yes, the Bruins need a top-four defenseman. Hell, they need two top-two defensemen, but overpaying is not the way to get it done. We did see some trades, though. Datsuk's contract to Detroit, which allowed the Yotes to draft Chitron and gave Detroit the salary cap space to approach Stamkos, which that'll be interesting to watch. Brian Elliott is a Calgary Flame, and of course we had the previously mentioned Montreal deals. So yeah, there's a lot left to be done in this offseason for every team, and it was an interesting night to start things off. But to sum it up, the U.S. and St. Louis in particular had one hell of a first round to this draft. But that will do it for this round one recap. Some interesting twists and turns. No blockbuster trades, but again, this was just the opening act. My question to you guys, if you made it this far, were you happy with who your team selected? Or if you're a fan of one of the few teams to have made a trade, are you happy 
with those transactions. As always, guys, if you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like down below, and I'll catch you guys next time.